Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Thursday morning trading room. Hang on one moment here while I get you my monitor. Markets got a little busy right out of the open. Um, NASDAQ here took a little bit of a bounce higher. We did get a pre-market hard edge buy, which would have been a very profitable way to start the morning. Two minutes into the session and you can be done. <laughs> All right, let's see what they do from here. Uh, looking for a possible double pullback here on the Raptor. So the Raptor moving into the cloud, coming out with one signal, looking for it to come back into the cloud, coming out with yet another signal. Look at this spike of volume for the open. That's crazy. Okay, here's an eagle signal. I wanted to highlight this here this morning because uh, the other day, Russell, I think, was asking, what about taking that first eagle signal? And I mentioned the eagle is one of these tools that I will do that on. I will take an early signal on the eagle. Now, ideally, entering above this high would be would be the best place to enter. What I've done is I've allowed the ATR to flip over, and you can see we've actually printed another signal right at that same level. So the eagle very often getting some uh, early, if there is a trend building, an early signal. And a lot of times that will have some follow through. We'll see whether how that plays through here today. Obviously, we're struggling right now with this 47, 56, 57 area. Once we get above that, that would pretty much confirm that the buyers are in control today. All right, while we were focusing on that, we actually got subsequent signals. We got a nice trend change signal right here in the Falcon. Actually, a late filter entry signal, as well as a trend change signal. So the trend line changed color. We get this little up, down, up pattern developing. And note the trend line goes out of sync and comes back into sync, but the trend line never changes color. That's a pretty high probability signal for us. And you can see we would have made our profit objective there. Hooray for us. So where's my next resistance line? 47.63 half. Okay, I'm actually going to get a little bit more aggressive here with my stop strategy. And maybe I'll go into the parabolics. They'll trail the stop just below the hard edge. You see this bar with this tail on it? You could also bring your stop in below that. That showed you some selling pressure and the buyers recovering. Therefore, if the the logic is if the buyers stumble here, well, then prices are probably going to head lower. In fact, the more I watch this, the more I like that idea. All right, maybe we'll do that.
All right. So we got the big follow through right out of the open or just prior to the open. The signal out of the open floundering a little bit and I just didn't feel like having it move against me too far. It's still early. The market's still looking for direction. In fact, we now have a red bar buy signal here on the hawk. Now with the red bar buy, it's a uh, it's a signal that we can also short. Oh, and it just hopped past me. So we could have shorted the failure of it, covered it here. We're coming back with the first micro macro cross signal, so we can certainly do that one. I'm also going to show you. Oh darn, it's gone a little bit too far. Here on the Raptor, we had a soft edge sell signal. Now the soft edge sell must always be preceded by a retest. So here's your retest of the high right here. There's Here comes the failure. Here is your soft edge sell signal. And it looks like that was a little bit short-lived. Don't tell me we're into another trading range kind of day already. I may try to run this one out, you know that. So obviously the sellers have started pressing again, so I should, should start to bring my stops in. Uh, perhaps I'll go with the parabolic strategy. It's fairly aggressive if the market starts to reverse here. Oh, there we go. They're going to tap me again. Okay, we'll see here in a moment whether that was too aggressive, or if I should have just held my stop back. I don't mind the small stop outs, obviously. Well, if this isn't a market that's struggling for direction. Okay, well, this is the first micro macro cross higher. And I always tell you it's a high probability signal and you can take it almost without exception. 
the logistics on this one are a little bit more difficult because if you haven't figured it out already, it's looking like we're in a trading range. So if you're going to take this trade, make sure you only go in with a single contract. It's not worth trying to risk a lot on this one. Because sideways ranges, of course, just tend to bounce around back and forth. I can see them recommit for a bar or two. I'll get my stops up again. So the buyers showing up again, I'm going to have to go with something like the bar high low strategy, try to keep my stops nearby. All right, there we go. It's not pretty, but such is a ranging market. That's why you'll hear me say time and again, if you recognize the market is in a sideways range, your best plan is to let the market get outside that range. So let's put that up there. I'm, I'll point out a decent trade to you if it one comes along. But again, we're not going to get it until we get outside this trading range. Good morning, Tony. Tony. Tony writes, sorry, I was just watching uh, crude oil fall off the map. Tony writes, uh, the market is dynamic, what works one day might not work the next. I keep miss missing the short-lived trend line, change trades by one or two ticks, so I reduced my profit target in Trade Manager from 19 to 20 to see if that makes a difference. You know, your biggest challenge as a trader is to figure out whether the market is trending or where, whether the market is moving sideways uh, because it's going to offer different opportunities depending on the directionality of the market. If the market is moving sideways in a tight little range, it's really, really difficult to trade. If it's moving sideways in a rather large range, well, then there's going to be some opportunities. And unfortunately, when it is range bound, there's really nothing you can do. You can try every once in a while, you know, throw a small order on to see what, what comes of it. Here's a, a cloud crossover signal now on the Raptor. So the clouds crossed over, the Raptor retreated into the clouds, we produced a signal.
we know there's some sensitivity up here in this 4760 area because uh, yesterday's highs were what 67 47 67 68 somewhere in there oh I guess I better get a stop enabled This is also why I have a, a limit on my day, uh, my loss limit, my pain threshold. Because some, sometimes, you know, you can do everything right and the market just won't give you the follow through. Like, let's take the first micro macro cross as a for instance. Um, okay, so here's the first micro macro cross. I think I took that one. Yes, I did. I took that one. Just checking my paperwork. Took this one, and uh, we got stopped out down here somewhere. So it was a failed first micro macro cross. Okay, it happens. Here is another first micro macro cross. Let's pretend for a moment. Okay, so we have this first micro macro cross and this first micro macro cross. Let's pretend for a moment that both these signals failed. You know, the market came down, reversed, and just kept going into the trading range, stopping us out for a loss again. When you have a day where you have two very high probability signals failing, you may try it a third time, just to be sure, but you shouldn't see two failures back to back. You know, if the market's not going up, okay, it's probably going to head down. But if it fails to head lower as well, then you may have one of those days where the market is just being very odd. It tends to, it doesn't happen very often, it tends to happen about once a quarter. Sometimes twice, but generally speaking, um, if you are taking a high probability signal and you get two or three of them and they keep failing, well then it's a pretty good indication that it's going to be one of those days and maybe you just want to pack it up and go do something else. Okay, so after that first failure, we had this first micro macro cross workout and then we had this first micro macro cross workout. So it seems like things are shaping up a little bit, albeit we're still very, very sideways here. Anger counter pull on hard over. Good morning, Jim. Here's the events. The client number is 1270 on the buy, 1325 on the sell. So pretty much a dead even market, which is what you would expect when things are channeling like this. Best thing to do is just give it a little bit of room, see if they can't sort things out.
Okay, so they're pushing through the top end of this trading range that we saw. So this was our trading range initially. Broke through the bottom end, couldn't sustain the breakout. Now they're trying to break through the top end. We'll see if they can sustain that breakout. Otherwise, our trading range is going to become something like that. Uh, right, you are, uh, Jim. Jim says, uh, this Friday, tomorrow, is Triple Witching Day. And <laughs> I know that sounds very odd, but uh, Triple Itching, uh, Witching is when you get all kinds of things expiring on the same day. So we get futures contracts expiring, we get uh, stock index options, and stock options are all expiring on the same day tends to cause a little bit of turmoil for the market. <laughs> Jim, Jim asks how many puts are on the table. He's expecting obviously a little bit of a sell-off, which, you know what, I could see it. Okay, well, they're poking higher. Love to see a four arrow consolidation, maybe, or here we're getting a Mac we'll pullback. Come on, 
get into yellow bars. Don't fake me out. You got me twice already. Well, the advanced decline getting a lot more bullish. Fifteen, almost sixteen hundred on the buy, a thousand on the sell. Oh, I see. Jim says I'm thinking a rally to make the puts worthless. He's thinking about the uh, writing calls and puts, which is really a great way to trade options. So, looks like I should have held out with my uh, hawk trade, although I'm not sure I would have taken that much heat on the trade, but it did get up to our profit objective here on the support and resistance suite of 47.63 half. And now it's flirting with the trend change signal. So glad that got into yellow bars. Okay, let's see if they can get things turned around here for the the bears, I mean. So we've got a possible trend change here, looking for a failure and a soft edge sell here on the Raptor. No real signal on the Hawk just yet. We'd have to hold out for a red bar buy. in with the Falcon trade because it was running away on me a little bit. So there's the trend change signal I was waiting for on the trend change signal. Got in a touch late. And I'm actually going to hold this stop above Ooh. okay there's a if this is ever ninja obviously resizes the screen in order to keep it from jerking around like that automatically grab the price axis here and left click and just pull on it you're going to see this little f in the box show up on the top corner that freezes the chart, and now you can move your stops to where you want them. When you're ready, you can auto-format the screen again by clicking on that little F. So we're looking for sellers to get busy here on the Raptor. We're also getting a sell signal. So that's engaged. I know I'm getting a little bit late, but the positive slippage will make up for the negative slippage I got on the on the Falcon. Here two stops, ideally above the high. That's going to give us a little staying power. All right, I'm going to hold on to this and look for the sellers to come through. We're getting a macro pullback, or pardon me, a uh, 
first micro macro cross we were getting a macro pullback that's since spoiled by the yellow bars All right, if you wanted to go all in, you could sell, try to short this green bar sell. I don't believe these guys. Sorry, wrong button. We've had another signal print here, so that kind of nixes the green bar cell. The buyers are crazy strong here this morning. I've never seen a market so congested. Order, order oh, I was just going to roll this up to my Falcon stop, but it doesn't look like it's going to make much difference right now. Well, okay then. Thanks for coming out. Don't tell me they tagged me. Just for a tick or two. Well, I don't 
don't feel much like uh, chasing another order. This is a very, very odd kind of day today. Yeah, Tony says old resistance at 4768-ish. That would be um, yesterday's highs. Or near yesterday's highs. Good for you, Jim. Jim says, I sold a bunch of uh, Dow Jones puts yesterday. Well, you should be pretty happy looking at the rally here. Excuse me, folks. I've got another sneeze coming on. So Alicia asked a great question here. Is it good to stick to a profit objective? I mean, taking $50 for the hawk instead of looking for a runner? Yes, absolutely. And most times you'll see me do that. Every once in a while, I got to be the wise guy and try to um, catch a runner on the market. And of course, it's great when it happens, but it's also very difficult to do. And there they go, blowing through that 4768 area. Well, the good news is the market does seem to be in an uptrend now. Yeah, Jim makes a good point. Profit makes you feel better than not. And the, the little profits add up too, right? It's remember, it's not frequency that we're after. I know during the room here, you'll see me take uh, quite a few trades sometimes. And a lot of times I just try to point things out to you. But uh, in actual fact, uh, when when I'm trading, I'll trade two, maybe three times in a session. I really try to hold out for those really good setups, those, those cherry trades, if you will. And sometimes you're going to miss a move. That happens too. Wow, 
the advanced decline very strong. For 1760 on the buy, 940 on the sell. tear now. I'm going to look for a consolidation or some sort of opportunity to regroup. All right, so here we are, just kind of stalling out again.
Okay, this is uh, their second push higher here now on the on the eagle. So we saw the breakout. This was leg number one. This was leg number two. Usually with the eagle, we'll only see two legs, which is why I'm getting a little bit hesitant about <clears throat> some of these buy signals that we have coming along. Come on. Uh, Jim says, have a look at crude oil. We've got a consolidation going on. cell signals here. Now we're actually producing a first micro macro cross higher. Can I cover it down there? No, of course not. So there's the first micro macro cross for crude. It's not too bad. I can cover it back here. Um, my concern is that it may just end up being a great big bear flag. Was this the retest of the low? Or is the market just going to enter a sideways trading range? and try to trick me into buying the top end of the range. A full-on reversal after a, a rather substantial move like that, it does not seem likely. Uh, Salish is asking, we've got a number of buy signals on the hawk. Is it okay to take those so long as you're in sync with the eagle? Um, sure, you can. Um, I, I try to trade each of the tools independent of each other. So when I have a first micro macro cross, I may or may not have a bullish eagle. Now today it looks like everything was in sync and the signals do tend to work out a little bit better when there's 
an agreement between all the tools. I know it's tough though when you take a trade and it runs away on you a little bit. So let's say here's the first micro macro cross signal. Uh, that one was a tense thing. So we'll take this one. There's the first micro macro cross. You scalp out and then the market just keeps going without you. Very annoying. The cure for that is if you can take more than one contract. You take the trade. No, oh, still only in with one. I was going to suggest the cure for that is if you can take two contracts, you can take the profit on the one and you can have the runner on the other. That's the appeal of the runner. Of course, occasionally the market will advance like that very quickly and it can significantly multiply your profits. But in most instances, you will be better off just taking profit when you have it. All right, here's a here's my last chance for this market. We're getting a late filter entry signal. It just tripped. Um, we'll take advantage of the second push opportunity. Can I cover it down there? getting a little bit late in this trend. Things slowing down quite a bit. Does not mean we will see a reversal, just that we don't have that momentum we did earlier. What an odd day today. Just not getting any uh, follow through on the subsequent signals, but it could be that the the room is or that the move is done.
finally caught a break. Um, hopefully we'll get this trade to break even shortly. So much for that. Oh my goodness, we really got to see the buyers come back here one more time. I'm going to roll my stops up a little bit anyhow, just because the market is the way it is today. Here they come again.
right, here we go. One more try. So it's probably advisable. You could leave your stops below this swing, but the buyers are trying to press. I would really like to see one more bar finish bullish here. That would make it a lot easier to roll my stops underneath here. If you're getting a little bit anxious, you can certainly bring your stops underneath that swing as well. They're trying. Oh my gosh. Well, there's not much follow through. The market's gone dead quiet. We're probably going to see it range here for a little bit. If they fail to take out the 47.83 half resistance zone, uh, we should see a reversal. Okay, come on. There, we finally hit the break even. was a break even stop out.
Okay, we're flashing a red bar by. It's so tempting to try to short this now. You could view this as your test of the extreme and that this is now your soft edge cell. If you're going to do that, however, you need to keep your stops above this high. Now, remember what the the whole point of the soft edge cell is that you see a market that's topping out, right? Normally, we see this kind of situation where the market tops out, heads lower, you get your soft edge sell signal based on the failure of the test of the extreme. This one, the market did go higher, there's no question, than this high here. However, it's failed to head higher. I don't know if that makes much sense to you. This is a much easier failure to spot, but after watching this unfold for the last, I don't know, what's it been, 20 minutes? Um, I think it's fairly safe to assume that the buyers are struggling at this point. And therefore, this could be seen as a soft edge sell signal. Now, we may well get another little bounce in here. We may get a little itty bitty bounce and then the market come back and produce another soft edge sell signal. That's entirely possible. That's why the stop needs to go above the high. We're, at this stage, we're looking for the high to hold and seeing how it took so long for the market to try to trade higher, there's a reasonable expectation that maybe the sellers are going to try to push the market lower. If you're going to try these trades, because the market is so sideways today, you should really just go in with a single contract. You know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, at least you haven't lost a lot. Okay, so here comes that little retest now. And providing they hold on the highs, and I'm going to give them a little extra here.
Okay, so here's this retest now of the high. We'll see whether there's a follow-up failure. This would make for a more predictable sell. Okay, it's not even funny anymore. Here they go. They're going to run my stops again. It's just one of those days. So, you know, when things like this happen, and they, you can see they happen from time to time, the thing to do is to have uh, a max drawdown that you're prepared to absorb. Uh, for me, that works up to 5% of my capital. If I tap out at 5%, well, then my, my day is done. It's obviously a, an odd kind of day today. And on that note, I think we're going to button things up. If you're going to trade this afternoon, shoot, I thought we'd see a reversal long before this, but uh, obviously it hasn't happened. Uh, the buyer's still seeming in control. So if we get another pullback, another buying opportunity, that might be your best bet. Otherwise, you can do what I'm going to do and call and see if you can get a tea time. All right, you guys, we'll catch you again tomorrow. Bye for now.